Hi guys, Mike here. In this video, we are going to have a look at how to create a UMG user widget and how to add it to the viewport in C++. So let's get started. In the editor, before we'll have a look at how we create it in C++, let's first have a look at how we would do this in Blueprints. So in our game mode, let's use the game mode for that. In our begin play, we would, let's say, create a widget hook it up, select our BP text widget. Then what we usually do is promote this to a variable, call this, let's say, text widget. And then, then add to viewport, compile, the only play you can usually do get the player controller, but we can leave it also empty. So this is how you would do this usually. And let's test this. So in our level, we have in the world settings, we can override our game mode, select the BP game mode, hit play, and our text block is visible. Our user widget was shown there. So Let's stop this. Either let's disconnect this and now head over to C++. So let's go to our game mode base. And from last time, let's delete this one here. And what we going to need, and it's still there from last time, the widget class that we defined, it's the BP underscore text widget in the game mode so we need this to create the actual widget and then we need another u property make it visible instance only so that you can only see it once the game is running maybe give it a category of runtime and then what we need is forward declared and say u text widget. This is the class that we created, this one here, U text widget, and call it text widget. This is the variable that we need once the widget is created that we need to set it like we promoted it to a variable in blueprints. And then the last part that we need to do is create the override for begin play. So we usually do this by virtual begin play override and implement the function over here. And now that we created this, let's first do some checks. It's really important when you're using T subclass off or a reference to classes that you're checking if this class is well. So what we are doing here now is we type in if widget class or if is valid widget class only then are we going to create our widget and we are going to do this by saying text widget equals and then there is a function called create widget. And this is, you can see here, declared in the header user widget.h. So if you don't use writer like me, you need to include this file here, blueprint slash user widget.h, and then you can create the widget. Create widget has several possibilities like uh, with the owner that we've seen in blueprints, the get player controller, or we can just say get world and the widget class. And now we have an issue because it returns a widget, a U user widget. So we need to cast it to our specific class, which is the U text widget and put this in parentheses. And now you can see 
text widget is incomplete, so we need to include it. So what you also need to do is include the text widget.h, and now this works fine. And then let's compare it to C++. This is what we did, or to Blueprints. This is what we did. We created the widget and set it to a variable. Now we need to add it to the viewport. So what we usually do in C++, or it's a very good practice, we need to check if the pointer that we get back is valid only. Then should we access functionality of it? So what you can do is you type in if text widget or to make it more readable, you say not equals null pointer. That's more readable. And then you can say text widget dot add to viewport. And that's it. So now we can compile. And once it compiled, we head over to our editor. And back in our editor, you see we have disconnected the blueprint version. And if we are playing, then we see the text block. That's the C++ version running. So this is how you create widgets and add them to the viewport. We placed it into or saved it into a variable so that you can access it later if you have custom functions in there, want to access other things from the game mode. So it's usually a good practice to have a U property, create the widget, save it into a variable, then add it to the viewport and you can do stuff later. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I tried to explain everything to the best of my ability, but if I didn't or things were unclear, please feel free to ask and I will gladly answer any questions you might have. So I hope you enjoyed this video and please leave a like and sub if you did. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.